Good morning. It's me, Mikey Pipes. What a great Monday morning. Monday morning, November 8th. Compliments of Greenberg Supply. And I just got to the shop. It's a little after 6.30 in the morning. And one of the first things I do is check out my buddy Conrad and his YouTube channel, Pipe by Conrad K Plumbing Services. It's he just posted a great video. I'll put a link in the description box down below. Then, usually every morning, I take out the deliveries that came the day before out of the truck. Let's see what we got? Supplyhouse.com. Real people, real service. I got this right here, and I also got, where is it? It's in the back. It's in the back. This Bosch. This Bosch mini tank water heater. That we're taking out a 10 gallon electric water heater for a commercial client, and we're gonna put that Bosch in. We're gonna do that today. And today we have a special ride along. So stay tuned, because you're not gonna wanna miss it. Oh yeah? yeah. All right, got, hold on. I'm back and I got Peter with me. He's a little camera shy. He'll break out of his mold. Peter, Pete, yeah. Peter is Daniel's brother. And he's riding along with me today. We are in Hewlett Bay Park. You got these Taj Mahals. And McMansions, well, not really McMansions, but Taj Mahals. We love Taj Mahals. And on this particular customer, we are going to blow out her hose faucet lines. I do this every year. We put away her hose reel, her uh, hose faucets, and we get it done. All right, let's go go into our crawl space and get up in there. Hello. Good morning. How are you? How are you? We're vaccinated. Yes, we're all vaccinated. Me too. Okay. I'm just going to go into the crawl space. Yes. And. I'm all ready. You're ready for me? Perfect. Oh, love it. Wish they were all so easy. Yeah, well, it. not always so easy. Yeah. I got it. I'll do it. I know. I'm just check it out down there that nothing bad is going okay. on. Okay. Like nobody. No, no, no bodies. No bodies. How no. about gold bully and a bearer bond? Yeah. If I find yeah. that, finders yeah. keepers, losers, weepers. <laughs> uh, is it any of these switches? No, they're ready on. Okay, she already turned the switches on for me. All right. We're all good. We're all good. There he is. All right. Now, let's. She said, if I find any gold bullion, or bearer bonds, or diamonds, loose, loose, loose jewelry, it's mine. All right. So that valve right there. See any bodies? No bodies. Okay. Just the insulation. Oh, I don't get paid enough for this. Dealing with cobwebs. Nah, I'm good. We're just gonna close this valve. All right, like that. Good. Uh, you're like, oh, monkey pipes. What are you doing? You should let. You should let Peter. No, not Peter. Is it Peter? Or Paul? No. Peter. Peter. Try it, Peter. Let Peter go in there. I was like, well, I don't want to scare him away. Really? Now, why would he touch that? I don't know. But anyway. But I did find a pound of gold and it's in my pocket. <laughs> it's okay. Here you go. That's the pain. Yeah. Oh, so everything's soon as calm. Yeah, everything's fine down there. I think you turned on the. Um, I didn't no, think you turned no. on No, no. We only have, you only have three hose faucets and that's what you got. And we didn't no. turn this because nope. we don't use it. If you open the garage, I'll put the hose reels and, you know, they belong. Yep, yeah, we got it down to the I know, it's been doing this for years. Yeah, we got it down to the <laughs> We sure do. Um, I'm just going to, let's unlock this. Because we do need power for the compressor. All right, very good. All right, let's go get the compressor, and then we'll start blowing out things. All right, so we have our air compressor pressurized with compressed air. We have an adapter piece that we're going to screw onto here, but we have the valve closed in the crawl space, right? Now we have two other hose faucets that are used by this house. The one is in here in the front and there are two in the back. Now I am going to hook up that air compressor to one of the other ones, right? 
And we're also gonna take her hose rails, put them down in the garage. And once we hook up to another hose faucet, right? The disc oh, no, sorry. We're gonna hook up the compressor to here. We're gonna open up one of the other two remaining hose faucets and then take compressed air from here, blowing it through the house and out to the other side. Once we do that, then we'll close that one and then blow from here to the other remaining one and then blow that out. And then when we're done, we'll leave them all open. Capish? Capish. 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 All right, let's go. All right, so here is the next one. So we're going to take off this elbow, all right? And this hose faucet, all right, we're gonna wrap this up. So let's take this up. Let's bring it up over here. Oh. Why am I stuck? There we go. Now, let's reel this up and we're gonna take the compressor and blow this out. All right, so I got my air compressor hooked up right here. Make sure that's closed. This is open and we got pressure there. This doesn't really work out that too well, but it is what it is. Okay, let's regulate that a little bit, good. And I'm gonna head over to the other one we just opened and then Robert, sorry, Paul, <laughs> Paul. Paul is going to open it up and let the air through. All right, so he is manning the compressor and this is open like that. And shortly thereafter, we are going to see the water be pushed out of this with the compressed air. Peter. Is it Peter or Paul? Damn, I keep forgetting his name. Look at that. Just like that. Perfect. 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 The tank is going to build up pressure again, and we're going to do it again. Okay. Good stuff. All right. Let's close this and then go up to the next. All right. Here is the next one. All right. This hose reel has seen better days <laughs> for sure. Time she invests in a new hose reel. Come on, living in this nice Taj Mahal with a nice pool. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna close this one. And that, he'll blow that out one more time while I wrap up the hose. See? Quick little service call. Easy peasy. And as Paul. <laughs> Peter, damn it, I keep messing up the name. Peter, Paul, I'm just gonna call you P. Nah, P. P. We're gonna think of a nickname for you. Peter Piper. Like Piper. Daniel's mini me. No, Daniel's. Ah, uh, guys, we need a nickname for Peter. Paul. Peter? <laughs> Peter, yeah. Peter, damn it! I gotta think of like, uh, I keep thinking like it's one of the apostle names, right? Well, Peter and Paul were. Well, the apostles, weren't they? They were, they were together, yeah. So, but they're both, and I'm confusing the two. Damn it. <laughs> damn it! All right. <laughs> Banged at that service call, winterized her outside hose faucets in her little Taj Mahal and Taj Mahal Ville over here. And now we're heading over to a, another service call. Uh, this is, let's see what this one is. This is, they only wanted me, Mikey Pipes. And we are going to Belrose, Queens. He's got a gas boiler that after five or 10 minutes, the pipes start making banging sounds and only wants Mikey Pipes. Well, he's also going to get Paul. Yeah. Paul, oh, damn it! Oh! oh, my God. I'm so out of it today. I don't know why. I don't know why. But if you are watching this as a live premiere on my channel, if you want a magical pipe wrench, you must smash that super sticker or super like button and St. Mike 
will gift thee a magical wrench. Yes, you too can have a magical wrench, but it's gonna take a lot more than smashing that thumbs up button, which you should be doing anyway. Because Saint Mike commands thee to smash that thumbs up button. All right, let's all head over to Bell Rose. One of the things I don't like about doing jobs in Queens is that sometimes you gotta park all the way down the block because there's no spots at or near the customer's house. So here we are. Bellrose, Queens, probably got a steam boiler, I could tell, but all these houses, they all got steam boilers in them, all of them. All right, let's go see what's going on. Well, it ain't, at least it ain't Miss Molly. <laughs> it's got blue eyes, by the way. Blue-eyed feline. Hi. Back to me, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. How are you? Good, 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 good. Here for your heating issue? Yeah, yes. Okay. Follow you? Yes. Okay. So I just went off. Oh, you weren't expecting me? No, I expected. I thought it was between uh, 9 and 9. Yeah, it's 9 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Wakey, wakey. Thank you. Hello. Yeah, Mona, can you wake up? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, this is the boy room. Okay, well, tell me what's wrong. So, uh, like, why start my boiler? Like, this, uh, making a uh, banging noise. Okay. Like, uh, I'm trying to... Uh, uh, figure out what's the reason behind that. This is this is the that's the water heater. Yeah, it's yeah. this one. Yeah, you got a steam boiler back there. Yeah. Okay. So I saw the video. Your video on the YouTube was a uh, as a clock, the return pipe. Yes, maybe. Uh, yeah. So uh, I think mine is uh, have, having the same problem. Like the you have a door over there too, right? All right, let's go get a better view. You can put that down. Probably near the boiler. Let's go see what we see in here. Any, any light in here? Um, no. Light. All right. Let's check this relief valve. 15 psi. Okay, good. All right. So let's turn the boiler on. See what happens. I smell gas. And I'm wondering if it's pilot or gas valve. Because you can smell it. So we're gonna use the soapy water, which has proven to show leaks for centuries. <laughs> Let this thing cycle on. That box right there, the transmission module. There's a relay here and transformer. There's the gas valve. Pressure troll, pressure gauge, sight glass, low water cutoff, relief valve, automatic vent damper. <laughs> now repeat after me. <laughs> Electronic ignition module. We have a relay and transformer here. This is the gas valve. Pressure troll, because it regulates pressure. Pressure gauge, because it looks like a gauge. Sight glass, and low water cutoff. And I want to see. I swear, there's something leaking here. I don't see anything. Huh. I could smell it, but I don't see anything. All right, made a little adjustment to the gas pressure on the gas valve on this brand new boiler <clears throat> because our O2 was about four. What, did it go lower than four? Um, no, I think it's around four. Okay. So now we have 6.2% of O2 and zero parts per million or particles per million of CO. She's burning perfectly. That is perfect combustion when you have no carbon monoxide being produced by the system. So now what we do now, we're gonna click clipboard. 
Okay, pull that out of the hole. We're gonna hit escape. And next we're gonna do draft. Right there, we're gonna hit okay. We'll hit okay again, and you're gonna see it's gonna zero out. It takes 11 seconds for it to zero out, and once it's done, you're gonna stick that back in the hole. Okay. Uh, once it's done though. Just the, the center hole? Up, that way, same way it was before. Okay, go. But that away. If you notice before you had it on an angle before, oh, yeah. you have to try to get it in there. Perfect, like that. And we're looking for a negative pressure, which is what we have. Now we have positive pressure. We're gonna see what happens with this thing. Hmm. Come on. We'll wait on this. It may take a few few seconds. We may have to reposition the probe though as well. Let's see if I could get that in there. Or it's zero. Hmm. Might have to hold that there. Yeah. Might have to address this chimney and po having positive pressure. Yeah, that's not good. All right. Well, the water heater came on while we were testing. Let's see. Let's lower that down. Turn that off. Let's see. And you're in a very confined space here. We have a 40,000 BTU boiler. We have 100 and at least 40,000 BTUs there. That door is normally closed. This door is normally closed. Uh, it just went to and now it's a negative pressure. See that? We, we cut back the water heater, and now we have a boiler that's drafting properly. Mm -hmm. you, need to, you need to bring, you need to introduce fresh air from outside into this room. It's imperative, because uh, you, you will destroy the boiler. Mm -hmm. but, and it puts it starving for, star, starving for fuel. If you take a look over here, this is the end of the steam main at the front of the house and you can hear all the steam coming out of there and you can tell it's evident by all this black crap that was and now we have the hammering sound we have the hammering sound The main valve, you need to be changed? The old? Yep. Also, right? The main Yeah. Metal. We're gonna have to. Uh, I tried to buy myself, I, I cannot get it at all. Yeah. We're gonna have to. Um, we're gonna have to try to crack this union here and see. Like, I don't even know what, what the hell that is. Like, this, there's a T here, the heel T here, and it's something's broken off in there. But we're assuming that this pipe here is clogged, which is preventing water from going back to the boiler. And we'll be able to adapt from this one inch pipe to three quarter and then hook up some kind of like boiler drain. And yeah, we'll see what happens. We gotta break this union though and try to take off the union and try to flush out this line, but let's go back to the boiler and see what Look we got. Look at the top of the boiler. Let's review everything first. Um, so the piping is done wrong, All right? We have a header going to the back of the house, header going to the front of the house. Here is the gas piping coming up, and the, the equalizer goes there, and then they did this. They did the piping completely wrong, completely wrong here. If we follow this, we will see nothing in there. Yep, there's the steam pipe. There it is there. Somewhere here is the rear wet return. Somewhere here. So this pipe is the wet return. And they just soldered on a three quarter inch a valve there, ball valve, which with no means of how do you drain this, you know, like laziness. But let's take a look, a close look at the piping now. We have our two inch coming out of the top of the boiler. They're only using one tapping. Comes up across, goes to that steam tee, which 
then points down and goes back to here, which is our, would be our Hartford loop. And you see it, we're running out of water. See that? Because the water's not making its way back to the boiler and it just all effed up. You need it to come up here, elbow across, and then have multiple T's, two T's, one for that one and one for the other, right? And then the opposite side goes to the wet return. The boiler's piped in wrong. Did you pay him in full? Pay what? Did you pay them in full? The boiler? The boiler people who put the boiler in. Are they paid in full? You owe money still, hopefully? No. Like, like a, several thousands of dollars? No? No. You, you better get them back here and have them put it in the right way. It's wrong. They just replaced the boiler. They, yeah. They didn't do the... the like, I know they didn't do the piping, the, the distribution yes, piping. Original. Yes, I know, but the way they piped and everything here is wrong. And at a minimum, at a minimum, right? I'm, let's call let's call a spade a spade. This piping here was probably already there. This is new. That 45 is new, newer, right? That may even be original, oh. maybe. But nonetheless, the way it's taken off the top of the boiler, no bueno. You need to come up, elbow, a T, and then pick up the riser. And then at the end of that, go to the make sure your equalizer and then Hartford loop. Here, we ran out of water, right? Because the water is not making its way back to the boiler. And there are two pipes that come back to the boiler. One's in the back of the house and one's in front of the house. And the pipes, are, are, are they making banging sounds back there too? Yes. Yeah, so we're gonna have to do a little demolition derby. No, yeah, no, <laughs> no, no banging, just uh, like a like couple sounds. Right, yeah, because the boiler was off. Yeah, boiler was and, but now there's no more water in the boiler. All right, let's see if they got the valve almost closed there, by the way. It's going to slowly fill up to put more water back into the boiler because it's not making its way back to the boiler. All right. So what we can try to do is, and this is a long shot, um, we're going to try if we can break that union in the front of the house, in that closet where the, where the gas meters are, and we're going to try to hook up something there so we can make its way back here. But because you have two returns, there's one the one over there. Oh, okay. Unless we start opening up walls, it's not gonna not gonna be easy. Yeah. Not gonna be easy. We're gonna have to. That's why I say we'll do a little demolition here. And unfortunately, it's it's okay. that kitchen. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, you yeah. you know anyone who's a carpenter or a handyman? Uh, I have a yeah. I don't find a carpenter. I mean, uh, because you're gonna need to open up the sheetrock and maybe take down some cabinets. Oh. Yeah. And you know that pipe is inside this. Under, under the stairs here. Any way to look under the stairs? Let's see. Let's see if we can look under the stairs. Hold on. Let's see if we can look under the stairs. We can look under here though. Oh, there it is. There's the return to the back of the house. All right, which is kind of warmish. All right, and that goes in this way, and it goes over over here. All right, it ends up there and right over here. If I were to use my thermal imaging camera, we're gonna see that hot pipe inside this wall. And there's a line going that way, a line goes this way. So I can't, there's no way, there's no, you don't have the, the, the components in place for me to try to flush out the wet return. And there's no guarantee me flushing out the wet return is gonna work. You may have to replace the wet return. And I know it's a finished basement, it's a lot of work, but yeah, it is yeah. what it is, like the this boiler, the boiler, the water that the boiler uses to create steam, which then is used to heat the house, is not making its way back to the boiler. Right. Because one or, or both wet returns are clogged. All right? One or two returns are clogged. Yeah, either the one in the front, the one in the back, or both are clogged. And there's no, there's no uh, system in place for me to try to clean that out. We have to, we have to add that to the system. Uh -huh. And the hardest one is the one in the back. Right, because you have a kitchen there, mm -hmm. and I don't, I don't see the, like I see the piping in front of the house, right. but I need to see that in the back of the house. Oh, okay. All right. All right. How do you feel? feel Thumbs good. up. He feels great. Look what we found. We found the closet, but before finding the closet, I got thrown off. I thought this pipe, which was two inch, it's not two inch. This is something other than the two inch. And I thought 
it went there and then made its way to the wet return by dropping down there. I pulled out the stove, cut open behind the stove, and I don't see the pipe. So I pulled out the refrigerator. Well, we pulled out the refrigerator. <laughs> pulled out the refrigerator, as you can see, made a hole there too. Where is it? Right there. See? And still no pipe. Then I'm looking. We're standing in this illegal kitchen, right? In this basement. And I realize that we're an extension of the house. And that this pipe extends from the other side of this foundation wall, all right? Hey, here's the foundation wall. They cut it open. Foundation's here, right? And I'm thinking, oh man, I don't want to destroy this guy's bathroom. So I think again, like, why is there a big void there? So I went behind this dryer, washing machine, and I opened that up a little bit, and I saw the pipe going in there, and I saw this. This pipe, wet return from the front of the house, this pipe, wet return from the back of the house, and I got two one-inch copper lines right there. I could easily cut that, throw on a T, valve, drain, and we'll be able to flush here and clear out at least the front wet return. The one in the back, unless I tear apart, that, that uh, bathroom, not gonna happen, but let's see what happens. Where's the, uh, the meter go back? The testo? The box, the testo. Let me show you where I normally put it. All right, I didn't have everything I needed on the truck to make this work. Uh, missing a one inch valve straight ahead. Push it straight in, right in there. I was, I told Peter that, all right, Peter? Yep. I got it right, look at that. I told Peter that, Paul, Paul it's not Paul, you're Peter. I told Peter that everything you take off this truck, make sure you put it back where you got it from. Because things get lost that way. And it's not really lost, it's just misplaced. And then I won't, when I need it, I'm not gonna be able to find it. So anyway, I told him that he's gonna have to give me his, uh, his left testicle and his right kneecap to uh, fix his clog wet return. And I said, listen, we're gonna put in a bunch of flush valves in. We're not gonna do it today. We'll be back here Thursday, which is the 11th. And hopefully, we will be able to use water pressure and flush out his wet return for the front of the house. And the one in the back is not giving him a problem, but we're gonna throw in the valves there anyway. It's easy, one inch copper, press it right in, done, easy peasy. Ready to go for the next one? Yep. Next service call is in Elmont, and he's got he's got some issues there with his boiler. Oh, what happened with, what is, oh, let's go see what he's doing. Let's go look at my service pal app. We're going to Elmont. Customer turned on boiler and water's pouring out. All right, you ready, Peter? Yep. Let's go get some money. Good morning, morning ma'am. How are you? How you doing? Okay. I know we're here today, uh -huh. but I think we're also coming on Thursday for you, as uh -huh. well for the radiator, right? Uh huh. But I'm here today with why water's pouring out or something? The boiler. Let's to go service see. the boiler? Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Thank you. And your name? My name is Mike. Mike. And this is Peter. You were here before, right? Yes, many times, many times. <laughs> okay. So the heat's off right now, right? Oh, yeah. All right. Let's go to the thermostat. Freezing. <laughs> Let me turn on the, the heat. Thermostat right here. Heat. All right, let's raise it from 64 to, to 70, low battery. See that? It says low battery. We're going to get, get some new batteries up in this. You have, you have two new AAA batteries? Yeah. Okay, great. So you change, you, you'll be in charge of batteries. Right. I'm gonna go down to the boiler and make sure nothing's out of the ordinary. It's cold down here. Ooh, shivers, I'm shivering. <laughs> All right. All right, where's the light switch? Oh, I can't see. Voila, let there be light. There she is. Uh, she's full. She's full. She's full of water. Uh, she's full. Let's see what happens when I pop open this 15 PSI relief valve. Yep, she's full. Full of water. That's just dripping from there. Let's see. All right. Electronic ignition control module there. We'll wait for Peter to come down here before I 
go over everything with him, but first we have to drain the boiler. Too much water in here. Okay, Peter. Here we have a gas-fired steam boiler. And it's a little nippy in here, right? Mm -hmm. Are you shivering? Not yet, I will be. <laughs> now, you're younger than Daniel? I'm 20, yeah. I would think it's the other way around. Really? Yeah. You're 20, he's 22. I'm taller than him. And you have a sister, and you also have another brother. Two other brothers, yeah. Two other brothers. One's 13, one's 29. One's a doctor. <laughs> one's a doctor. Daniel's a pipe doctor. Correct. And one's 13, still in school. Yeah. Okay, another steam boiler, right? Now, it, grabbing that tool bag, you'll see the red little flashlight that I shoved into it. Mm -hmm. Just sit on the floor. Yeah, let's rip that open. It's Velcro. Boom, there it is. Now, one of the first things we're gonna do, notice, is there's water on the floor. It's dripping, and active, active, actively dripping, right? Mm -hmm. And the side glass is full of water, all right? Because I can't see the level. So what I normally do, it's magnetic. By the way, a subscriber sent this to me. It's Milwaukee. I love it, by the way. It is. I made sure the valves were open. Mm -hmm. I always do that. Never assume that they're closed. Never assume they're open. Always confirm. But we have some drippage there and some up there as well. And I pop the relief valve open. I, after checking, it was 15 PSI because that's a company rule. We always check, make sure that the, the relief valve on the system we're working on is the right one for it. But I open this up. Water's coming out of there, right? So for whatever unknown reason... This boiler is full of water. So, we have a drain on this side right here. We're going to take one of the hoses out of the Ferguson five-gallon bucket. And we have two. I, oh, we could do the times two. One on one, one on the other, mm -hmm. into the bucket, and we'll drain this bad boy down. All right, I'm also noticing that this relief valve on the water heater mm -hmm. is dripping. It's been dripping for a while. So we're going to change out this relief valve. Open it up. Yeah. Good. So now we're draining twice as fast. I'm going to wait for this to come down. And we may need multiple buckets, but in the interim, let's see if there's a sink or toilet down in the basement where we can dump these buckets into. All right, we drained the boiler until the low water, low water cutoff came on. Now the light is, you can't see in the picture, but the light is out. Our water level is just about there. While we're doing that, I took the 100 XL temperature and pressure relief valve from the old boiler, along with the drip leg, and replaced with a new 100 XL, and I made a new copper drip leg just going to the bottom of the floor right there. The boiler relit, and now she's running. So now we can continue to test this boiler and make sure everything else is working perfectly. And try to figure out why that overflowed. Let's try that one more time. We're just gonna drain, let the low water cutoff sense the low water condition and see what's going on. It did make a funny noise before, so I just wanna see, make sure that it doesn't do that again. Like that. You missed it, damn it, let's try that again. Let's do this again. Watch, watch and listen. Let's do both at the same time, make it easier. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Damn, come on, Mikey Pipes, make us wait like this. Make sure you get, a, get yourself a magical pipe wrench. Wait. Didn't do it this time. But it, it's quiet this time. Yeah. You guys want yourself a magical pipe wrench. Super sticker, super chats. If you don't, if you don't know what that means, Google it. We're gonna do this one more time. Let's fill it back up again. It was very quiet this time. All right, take three. It made the noise once it had, once I added water back to it. Du -du -du. All right, let's see if it makes the noise when it goes out on low water condition. It's probably gonna take another 20 seconds, but I wanna get, 
see a little double click. Now, watch what I do now. All right, so that wasn't that, that was kind of normal in a way, but let's add water. You know, the popcorn percolating water heater. Hear that? Hear that little eh, eh, right? It made that funny noise. It started draining again. The low water cut if I really feel is suspect. Oh yeah, let's look inside this low water cut off. Yeah, see how that little mini transformer there? It's all burning up. She's done. She's on her way out. She's an old mama. Time to retire her. Put her out the pasture. Put her in. Oh, see, it now made the noise. Yeah. Ah, see? Mikey Pipes, you weren't gonna lie. I was gonna let you guys down. All right, so we have a bad low water cutoff, or going bad low water cutoff. And that's the reason why we have what it is, which is that noise, and possibly even reason why it overfilled. Because we don't, we haven't seen it misbehave as far as making that noise, but there's a reason why that. It was boiler was flooded. Yeah. And if it was the low water cut off acting up, giving power to the um the the WFE twenty four, which is the automatic water feeder, then that's the problem. So we need a new low water cut off. Let me go give her the great news and you know that's I'm gonna lick it before I stick it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> because she's not gonna like this one. That's not a cheap part. Yeah. Uh Will McLean. Will McLean. Is it burned out? The low water cut off? Yeah. Yeah. She lived a long life. This is the original one, by the way. It is what it is. I brought the towel. Normal operation. I brought the towel with me because I put the towel on top of the low water cutoff while I was changing the relief valve on the fly. Not on the fly, but I closed the boiler, the water heater feed valve, released some pressure with the relief valve, and then did the rest on the fly. But the towel was to protect. Yes. Okay, no problem. Let's go talk to your son. What do I do? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I want to take a picture of that. You see, they disconnected the pipe, right? They put a cap on it and took out the 45. But the problem is, see that white stuff looks like cardboard? That's called Aero Seal Pipe Fiberglass, oh, fiberglass, Aero Seal uh, Asbestos Pipe Insulation. So that, there's a piece there, uh -huh. and there's more of it right there. Technically, we can't touch this pipe yeah, if within a 10-foot radius of that. Uh, what is that pipe? Uh, that pipe goes to the radiator in the bathroom that was disconnected. Okay. So we're going to send a picture to her son of this and uh, while we're working on that. Okay. All right, first things first. We are going to change the sight glass nuts and washers. All right? And hold. First things we're going to do is close these valves and I'm going to loosen that up and I can also change the glass if needed but the problem here is not the glass. The problem is these connections, they've lived a long life and it's time for them to be renewed. So there is a side glass and I am going to Ooh, it's a little bit worn on top, but we're still good. I'm just going to rinse this off in the sink. All right, you can pause if you like. Now, we have one nut. We have a little friction ring. And we have this rubber washer. That's for the top. And then we have the same on the bottom. Okay. Now we're going to stick this in there. Drop it in there like that up a little bit okay this glass should be should be okay and I should be using the right size wrench it's a little bit smaller but this will work if we over tighten we will crack the glass by the way understood Open bottom, open top. You notice there's no water in there. And with this closed, you're not gonna get a reading. Both valves need to be open, 
All right, but we are draining because I want to replace the probe on this low water cutoff, which is, and that's what we are going to do. A little bit more out of there. You'll dump that. We'll disconnect this. Cool. Cool. Correct, the boiler does not know if there's too much water. Okay. And I guess we could add a pressure control on the boiler, like mm -hmm. something similar to this, where if there's too much water in the boiler, like if, if we were able to put like a pressure control, maybe like right here. Mm -hmm. And if we could set it to so it's sensitive enough where it is, if there's water up here, the water appears to have a, a, give it some, some kind of pressure. So if we can have one that's low enough where if it's sensed, let's say the water is filled up to here, right? It will prevent the boiler from running because there's too much water in the boiler. Alternatively, if we can add a water sensor like above the normal water line and do that, but it would probably get thrown off by the steam being created inside here. So definitely a good question. <clears throat> if we can install a pressure troll that is very, very sensitive where we can maybe set it to like maybe... A PSI or maybe like two PSI like and put it right here it would sense that water pressure on it and then prevent the boiler from running or even better if we could open open up a valve for automatic drain yeah. ah, all right all right so the top one is to neutral is white our hot which is H is green and yeah close those and the red is W so we're gonna take off these wires look at this even the the harness thingy Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, power's off. Ugh. We're going to replace the lower to cut off in, in its entirety, as, long, as well as the probe, which goes through the boiler right there. All right. Let me get a Phillips screwdriver. And let's go there. The white, I'm sorry, the red, the green, and the white. All right, like that. So now all those come out. Now this set of wire, right? That's going to our automatic feeder. Mm -hmm. This other wire, right? That is going to the, the, the control of the, the controls of the boiler. Okay. Now, we're going to take, damn, this thing is old as fuck. It's not even Phillips screws, it's using flat screws. Let me get a flat screwdriver. <laughs> uh, yeah, that one should work. As long as it's not too thin. Yeah, that should work. By the way, screwdrivers, complements of Weha. Great, great European tools. I think Dan, your, bro your brother, Daniel, also has Weha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's been sp he spends money on tools, man, I'll tell you. And, and vodka, he's got the he's got the beluga gold the vodka. You said he had with the with the with the clay on top with the little hammer. I'm such a bad influence, but by the way, I really am. But at least he knows what good vodka is and gets rid of that garbage Tito's. Man, Tito's is gross. Tito's is gross. Uh, all right, let's dump out the bucket. I am going to take that 24 inch pipe wrench. I am going to put it on there, and I'm going to become like a little acrobat because I'm going to get back there. And, and stand on that thing until that comes out. Because what do you want to bet you can't use these to take go off this probe? Yeah, you probably can. <laughs> You're right. You're damn straight. All right. Let's get this wrench up in there. Here, you film. You're going to entertain these people because they're hungry. Let's see if I can. They're starving. They're like starving animals. I'm telling you. They're hungry, and I like to feed them. And I don't know if it's going to be today, but I like to... Give them a wealth of information. Now, I need to push on that. Let's see how I'm gonna do it. How am I gonna do it with my fat ass? All right, here we go. Did it just move free like that? Did it? Did it? No, the, the, oh. Did it just move like that? I'm not sure. You were filming, weren't you? I was filming, what? Weren't oh. you filming? Yeah. Are you still filming? Yeah. I don't, know if, I don't know if I caught that. You gotta look, pay attention. Oh, wow, look yeah. at that. Yeah. That was actually pretty damn loose. <laughs> you think I'm gonna have to jump on it? Look at that. I guess I could have used the regular channel locks. Oh, yeah. 
That, it never gets that easy, by the way. So I'm going to take out this probe, and what we're going to see is someone actually used pipe dope on it and not Teflon tape. If you're using Teflon tape on probes, you're doing it wrong. Okay. And in case you're wondering, or saying hogwash, Mikey Pipes, you can use Teflon tape on there, I'm going to say you're wrong. You're wrong. How do I know that? Because I read, with my eyes, manuals. Here's the instruction manual. See that? Page three. Oh, Siri, go away. Siri, go away. God damn you, Siri. Do not use PTFE tape. Use only pipe sealant. Failure to follow these instructions will cause the probe not to function as intended and could cause property damage, personal injury, or death. Or death. See? You put pipe dope on there. No Teflon tape. All right? Yep. That's what PTFE is, all right? But let's see. If Blue Monster is made of PTFE, what do you think? You think it is? Uh, not sure. Oh, yes, it is. Look at that. Yep. PTFE uh, thread tape. See? Yep. I read instructions. I read instructions. Okay, let's go put the lower to cut off on. Pro dope. Pro dope is on the probe. <laughs> you're laughing. See, I told you you'd have a great time working for me, right? Yeah. All right, and you're gonna learn something. We're gonna stick it in the hole. So I licked it before I sticked it. All right. <laughs> you got a girlfriend? No, no. girlfriend, really? No. Ladies, he's he's single. Oh boy. Ladies, he's single. Are you as are you as religious as Daniel is? When it comes to like you, like the whole, I know you guys do the family rosary every night. Yeah. You went to Catholic school your whole life. Yeah. You're, you're an altar boy too, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah, you can hold the light. And you can hold the camera too, because I'm going to tighten the probe on this thing. And we'll get this bad boy back on there. So you came from another job doing commercial air balancing. Yes. And Daniel, did you ask Daniel or, he, or you asked, or did he ask you uh, about he, coming here? He told me that. Um, I'm look, oh, I was looking for a help. Interesting right away. Very good. Well, you're going to learn. Definitely. Now, I like to, while we're, while we're talking, I'm just going to prepare for work in advance. I don't want to spin this around again. This is the top, right? And there are holes there. I'm going to make sure that they line up where they need to be. So I need to turn this thing another 90 degrees so that those silver screws, which hold on the actual low water cutoff assembly, are are like that. So I can actually do it a little bit more. Ah, get on there, bitch. <clears throat> okay. Hopefully not too much now. Now, here is the new lower to cut off. See, it's almost identical to the old one, which is, where's the old one? It's more modern, right? But the connections are still the same. This is the old one, here's the new one. Now, I'm just going to loosen up the Phillip set screws on the probe. And I'm just gonna place this right, oh, I gotta take this one off too. side that's gonna go in like like that now it's a little bit off so I want to I'm a perfectionist so we're gonna bring this down just a little bit <clears throat> okay I want it to look nice 
it looks nice, it just shows that you care and you're doing a quality job. Now, we're gonna take that little knockout right there, stick this and put you in there like that. And I have this wire, it's gonna go right there onto the probe and I have the nut and a little washer that are gonna hold on that wire. And then take this little wing nut and we'll spin that on to secure the wire onto the ends of the probe. Why won't you catch? Get on there. Okay. Now the only thing we have left to do with this is I gotta take this wire, which is coming from the feeder, all right, and wire that in. Now, if we recall, the white wire was neutral, all right? The white was neutral. Oh, this is not gonna be fun. The hot was green. All right, this is not gonna work. We have to get the little stubby. I have no room in there. I needed the stubby, the multi stubby. All right. Now, the red, was it the red or the oh, green? The green, you green went to hot. Yeah. All right. And. W was red. So now that's on there like that. Okay, so now it's wired. Brand new low water cutoff. Wires are done. Turn on power. Voila, going to self test mode. And since it needs water, it's going to feed water. At our next job. Here we are. We're going to cut out a, what we believe is a faulty half-inch uh, ball valve on a steam boiler that's letting in water pass. Now, I know it seems like, Mikey, you're crazy. No, it doesn't, but we think that this valve here and this valve here are letting water pass. This is disconnected, right? Are letting water pass and filling the boiler water. So I got Peter. I got pipe, <laughs> Peter and pipe, and I got Viega. Let's go make this out. Now, I'm gonna cut there, and I'm going to take out this T. Let's see if it cooperates. Grab some Teflon tape off the side of the bag. Yep. Don't worry, you can show them too. Oh, uh, you want the blue one? Yeah, the blue Teflon tape. Okay. You know what, maybe you're right, because there's a lot of water coming out of this thing. I know, I see, it's passing. Great. You know why? All these valves held. Where's that valve? But well, we had all the water lines replaced and the pressure Did I bring, was... I bring in the valve that was here? Did I bring a valve in? Um, I don't think so. Oh. So... Let me see. Hold on. Did I just leave it in the truck? No, it's got to be in the pocket. It's in the pocket. <clears throat> You know how to drop half on tape on that? On um, on the, the piece? Oh, you just, just gave it to me. Okay, sorry. All right. You still spinning? Are we still recording? Yep. yep. All right, good. Let's take this. Put this there. We're gonna put this right here. Where's that press machine? Right. That. Give me that. Okay. Look how easy this is.
Gone. See? No valve is in. Now, Teflon tape. We're gonna wrap some Teflon tape on this piece of on this piece of brass. And then I'm gonna throw on a half inch press by female adapter like that. <clears throat> Let's hold you back there. And the fix. And the fix. Okay. Now, a piece of copper pipe. We need about this much. How good do you think this is? Is think it's a perfect fit? I hope so. Let's see. It looks like it. Oh. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Blind eye measurement. Look at that. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> and voila. Okay, we're done. That's an amazing tool. It is, isn't it? Okay, that valve is open. This valve is closed. And our water level is right around halfway. Easy peasy. All right, quick little service call. Installed a half inch press ball valve. And now we're going to our last service call of the day. Gentleman's got a Navian that's leaking water. And I got Peter. There he is, Peter, Daniel's brother, younger brother. We're gonna see what's going on over there. All right, let's get going. Hi. Here for a leaking Navian, yes? Yeah, okay. I'm Mike, by the way. Hi, nice Behind me is Peter. Okay. When did the problem start? So it started, we noticed it on Saturday. But, it, and then we turned off the water going to the hot water tank. Oh, you turn off the water going to the water tank and, the, it's and not it bleeding. stopped. So this, this is I don't where, even have to look at it. This is where this is where it was coming out of from here. I don't where? The relief valve from uh, this one. That one. This one yeah I don't even have to look at the tank. Did you purchase the tank? Or did it come with the house? We that, bought it. You bought it? Yeah. Okay. Who installed it? Um, Jay's Energy. Okay. The tank, this titanium. You've been here. Oh, sorry. No, the titanium tank uh, generally has a lifetime warranty to the original purchaser. We're going to need to locate where this tank came from and submit a warranty claim on it. The problem is the tank is defective. Okay. Want me to further explain? Yeah. Okay. You answered the question by saying you closed the feed valve for the um, water heater. So now you're you're preventing the domestic pressure mixing with the hydronic pressure. Does that make sense to you? Okay, yeah. Yes? Which valve did you close exactly? I see a valve closed over there. And that is the cold water in or hot water out? The cold water in. Cold water in. So now you have no hot water any faucets. Right. So <clears throat> let's take, for example, let's pretend the pressure of the incoming water supply is 60 psi. Okay. Right? The, uh, the, the normal operating pressure of this NHB is generally over 12, maybe 12, 16, 18, somewhere in that range. That's where it's always been. And unless something changes, like maybe a defective expansion tank, or unless the boiler pressure reducing valve is letting more water, more pressure in than its preset 12, we need to figure out where the water is coming from. So if you close the valve and the pressure stopped and the leak stopped, right. the Domestic tank is leaking into the hydronic tank, or the, the domestic tank is leaking into the space heating tank, because the indirect water heater is essentially just a zone uh, on your on your boiler. Right. Instead of a zone with a thermostat heating air, you have an aquastat similar to a thermostat heating water, and that gives you hot water. And if we were to open that valve, we, we'd see this pressure, pressure increase again. Up. And then we've, we've now we've confirmed that the tank is bad. So, which is exactly what we'll do. And we may be able to hear it. But right now, pressure is at 28.4. Which is I hear, I hear it. By little. I hear the water running into the tank. 
Is there any forces open in the house? No. Okay. No. So if we give this some time, that pressure is going to increase. It goes fast because we did it a, yesterday. It was like around twenty-one or something. Say thirty point seven. And next, the tank is going to shoot, out shoot, you know, the pressure of the boiler increases so much where it shoots out of there. <clears throat> Let's see. Tectanium. Uh, that's why I don't install these. Diversified heat transfer. Model TT4055. Let's call them up and see where this was Now, sold. let's be honest. Let me get... Your thoughts. As soon as he said he closed the valve on the water heater, the leak stopped. How many of you knew right away there was the indirect water heater? Say yes, I got it, or say no, I didn't. Down in the comment section down below. And don't forget, if you want a magical wrench, you <laughs> you need to not only smash that thumbs up button, but you also need to super like or super sticker. Some kind of monetary exchange from you to YouTube to me. And you'll get a magical wrench, which will also make you a moderator of the channel. Mmm. Let's look up the warranty paperwork. There it is. And the TT40, right? Is it 40-55? Uh, 40-55. Did, did you find anything? No, so I, I can't find okay. it. Okay, I pulled up the manual. I'm going to look for the warranty and installation operation, maintenance, limited warranty. Replacement tank. If either a residential or commercial application, the final applies when a replacement tank is provided to the tank to be found under a warranty. <clears throat> it's about 4 years old. Yeah, it should be. I just want to... You know what? Just give them a call. That 800. Okay. We called Diversified Heat Transfer from Ridgewood, New York. All right? We called them up, told them what was going on, spoke to a person there, Gave me the phone number for Venco Sales. So that's three people I spoke to. The receptionist, the person who took the call, and now Venco Sales. So I spoke to Christy at Venco Sales. They're the local sales manufacturing representatives. So like a lot of manufacturers, they hire, they hire these companies to represent the marketing and sales and support end of their products. So Venco Sales reps these guys, right? I spoke to Christy on the phone. She's asking me for the serial number. I'm like, where's the serial number? Christy tells me the serial number is this, this thing right here, this 21 character number. She gives me the number and she says, well, when was the unit installed? I'm like, well, the homeowner said four years ago. And <laughs> he goes, well, it was manufactured in 2012. And I know that in 2012, we had Hurricane Sandy and there used to be a boiler sitting on this floor and now it's not. You found something. This is the best I have. It's Wow, you actually got this. You got the proof of purchase, which shows May 18, 2018. Where was this titanium tank sitting for oh. six years? It was a six-year-old tank that they installed? Well, the, the tank was, yes. The tank was manufactured in 2012. Okay. And it came with a seven-year manufacturer's warranty. But your proof of, re of purchase dated to you. I mean, dated May 18, 2018, right? Yep. Well, shows that it was installed on March 19, 2018. You got a great price for the NHB. Well, considering this is several years old. Yeah. Well, the Navy and that's... I'm curious to see if the Na what, what the manufacturer did of the Navy is. And what does it say on there? Oh, 2017. Look at that. You're built. This water heater sat somewhere for six years. Now I get to call back at Benco, the, the, the people who handle their, their, their issues, and we're going to call them with this piece of paper. Well, not so fast. Just got off the phone with Benco Sales. And, of course, I need to pull the anode rods from this titanium. There's one there, and there's another one down there, and I need to send them pictures of it. And by the way, she's got no ring around the collar, but I do see a little bit of corrosion forming now. Let me show you. Here we go. See that? That's the start of a failure. Hmm. Navian. Let's look at the main PCB. It's starting to just color a little bit there. It's starting to discolor. Good old Navian. 
Oh, Hacks bring me stacks. All right, I got my Milwaukee M18 transfer pump hooked up. We're draining the bottom of the boiler. I mean, bottom of the boiler. Bottom of the water heater or the domestic water is in the tank because I need to drain in order to pull this anode rod, which, as you can see, is probably going to start leaking like crazy once I pop this thing open. Let's see if we have enough water removed from the tank. No, not yet. Not yet. Still draining. And I got the hose hooked up to the standpipe behind the wash machine. So I'll let this thing run and then we'll see the condition of the anode rods. And I hope, for their sake, that the sacrificial anode rods are still sacrificing and they're in, good, in somewhat good shape. Because, as you know, no one changes anode rods, especially not in New York. Now, I know down in South Carolina, if you talk to Conrad at Kane's Plumbing Service? Yes. Oh, do you see any resemblance here? <laughs> Look at this. There's Daniel, son. And there's Peter. I finally got his name right. I was calling him Paul, Peter. I knew it was one of the apostles, but I knew it was, I couldn't remember if it was Paul or Peter. He's hired. Yes. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> That's right, and guys, if you want a magical pipe wrench, you need to start smashing that super like and super sticker button. Exchange of currency from you to me by means of YouTube. Or PayPal me, and I'll hook you up anyway. All right, let this thing finish dumping, and then we're gonna see the condition of the anode rod. That is just absolutely disgusting. And there's really not much left of it, but I am gonna send this picture to Christy and see what she says, but Damn, it was in that hole, right there. And in this case, you really don't gotta lick it before you stick it because she's already wet. <laughs> and by the way, so Dan, you know that he does not have a girlfriend. Yeah. Ladies, you see this, look at this guy. 20 years old, lives in the, on the border of, of between Nassau and Suffolk. Still lives at home with mommy and daddy. We're not gonna mention where he lives though, but, and we're gonna, he's gonna have a YouTube channel too. We have to think of a name for him. Peter Piper. Peter Piper? Peter Pipes. Yeah. And how does it feel to have a thousand subscribers on your YouTube channel? Daniel leaks a lot of HVAC. It's fine. Did you monetize yet? Did you request to monetize? Uh, Why not? I didn't get anything. You don't have to, you're not going to get anything. You have to go into the YouTube Creator Studio uh, on a desktop and you have to go to monetization, which was not, there was nothing there, now there is. And you have to sign up because it takes a few weeks before them to uh, approve you. There you go. All right. Let's send a picture to Christy at Venco Sales and see what she says. All right. I spoke to Christy at Venco Sales. She's going to want to see a picture of the other anode rod. Uh, that one, she goes, I don't think they're going to approve, but send me the other one anyway. So we're going to take this one out. And while I was on the phone with uh, HTP or Diversified Heat Transfer, I uh, got the partners for these anode rods because, as you know, I see these all the time and they're always corroded. Any water coming out of it yet? No. Okay. So I got the part numbers and they said the supplyhouse.com sells them, so I'll be buying some of these anode rods. You know what? Might as well. You see an uh, HTP? You know, another hour of labor? Anode rods? Any water dripping? No. Good. Let's see what it looks like. Pull that bad boy out. Just... Uh, ah. It's hot. Hot? Yeah. Hot like fire? I got gloves on. Yeah, is that? Yeah, you're done. No warranty on this bad boy. Damn! Damn! It's paint on the inside. It's pink on the inside? Caked on the oh, inside. Oh, it's caked on the inside. I thought you said it was pink on the inside. <laughs> yeah, look at that. It's just on. Yeah, wow, gross. Ugh. Sir? Yeah. Hi. So we drained the water heater completely. I removed the, uh, the lower anode rod as well. Okay. Unfortunately, it's even worse shape as the first yeah. one. Uh, I forwarded that to this woman named Christy at Venco Sales. She is the local sales rep representative for HTP, okay. who makes your water heater. And we will know probably sometime tomorrow whether they're gonna approve the warranty claim or not. Okay. So there's nothing we can do until tomorrow. 
right. and the water heater is off and drained, and the circulator is the wire is off it as well, so the circulator won't burn out. Because okay. there's no point of trying it to run; it's not going to do anything. Okay. Um, any questions? Um, no, I guess we're just stuck. Okay. For now. All right. So we're all set for today, and tomorrow we'll we'll reach out to you what they say. Okay. Uh, if they if they deny the warranty, I'll make sure that I'll I'll try to see if they'll, they'll put something in writing stating such, uh, and then I'll call you with options on on what's available to put in there. Ideally, the same exact model, and you know it's three hour job, you know with two guys, so not so bad. But if I can't get that model and you go with someone else, it could be an all day affair. You know, thousands, thousands of dollars. So let's see. All right. All right. So you're running out of hot water. All right. So right off the bat, you have the Navian NHB. It's a water tube boiler only tankless boiler. Right. And the, they piped in the water heater as a zone, which is okay. But this manifold which, or this piece right here has these little stub outs here and here, which is designed for an indirect water heater. They didn't use that, that in that fashion. So when the boiler, and, you, and I know you switched priority or non-priority for the zone, the boiler still would love it to heat the tank through those methods. Will that correct the problem? I don't know. But when a customer or I see a problem, I always like to correct the obvious things first. You never know. Maybe that'll work. Right. But I, again, can, can we do that instead of there? Yeah, we could do that. But again, we have to. We've a, there's a lot of work involved in doing it. I got to move the circulator from there to here. I got to take all the piping, which is pecs anyway. But it's still, you know, maybe two hours, two and a half hours of the work to put it the way it should be. Did you can you think of a reason why they wouldn't have done it initially? They didn't know because this was more work to them. And but symmetrically, it looks nice and pretty, right? But it's more work to do it that way. Okay, so I guess that's the point. So yeah. we're going to touch base tomorrow. What time do you think is... Uh... Look at that. we got Peter and Daniel. Daniel's not an apostle, but Peter is an apostle. And the best part about this is... Now, I asked you earlier this morning when I first met you, where do you see yourself in a year? And he goes, you know, maybe I could be what Daniel's doing. And I was like, will you, the family driveway fit two pipe doctor trucks in it? <laughs> That'd be pretty cool, though. Right? Yeah. Not bad. Look at this. You guys can carpool together. Yeah. You see? The only problem is going to be when I'm done early or later than you. We'll see. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Yeah. All right. Good night. All right. The day is now complete. It is 3.30 p.m. And I'm going to go park my truck at the spot and then drive home the J-Wagon. I had a great day today. You know, we got a lot accomplished, and I got some faith. I got some faith in Daniel's son's brother. I really do. I think Peter, you know, is determined to succeed in life so he can support himself and his family financially and secure financial freedom by being in the plumbing and HVAC trades. He's mechanically inclined. You know what? And he showed up to work on time. It's a blessing. It really is. But we need no more. We need more of today's youth. More of today's youth to get into the trades. You know? Unfortunately, they took away, you know, shop in junior high school. They took away auto repair, auto repair class. In high school, there's no such thing as home ec anymore in junior high school. There's none of that. And it's sad. It's sad because, let me tell you something, in 20 years from now, 25 years from now, when it's time for this generation to retire, who's going to replace us? And that's the million dollar question. And they need to start that now in the schools. You need to start that in elementary school, junior high school, high school. We need to bring back vocational class in school. Enough of this. Otherwise, we're all going to be screwed. Let's go, Brandon.